Uh, so welcome to the Cap the Rent launch, folks. Uh, we're going to be learning a lot tonight about what this campaign is and what we're going to be hoping to accomplish. Um, uh, to begin with, uh, we want to acknowledge that this campaign started uh, really uh, two years ago with the campaign to win a right to counsel in Connecticut. Uh, we did not expect to win a right to counsel, but through grassroots organizing, we were able to accomplish um, passing a law at the state level, which guarantees a right to a lawyer uh, to tenants facing evictions in cities across Connecticut. Uh, although the rollout is still ongoing, uh, the right to counsel has impacted tenants across the state. Um, and we hope that this uh, campaign to pass uh, a, right to, uh, a cap on rents uh, will be just as successful. Um, uh, so to continue, um, we won right to counsel for tenants in 2021, something no one thought was possible through grassroots organizing. The tenants movement has only grown stronger since. We now have tenants unions across the state ready to fight back against landlord abuses and rent hikes. Tenants have had enough. We need to shift the terrain between tenants and landlords and shift power to tenants. We must win housing stability for all. Uh, so as I already mentioned, uh, CT's coalition is wide right now for housing justice. Um, we are going to be talking about uh, rent caps now and why we want to win them. Uh, if we can pass to Sarah, uh, I'm gonna be dropping some links in the chat about how you and your coalition can join us in the fight for rent caps. Thank you so much, Jason. My name is Sarah White. I work as an attorney at the Connecticut Fair Housing Center, and I'm also a member of Connecticut DSA. And this campaign to win a rent cap is coming directly out of the tenant organizing. Many of us in DSA and the Connecticut Tenants Union have been doing since we won right to counsel in 2021. Time and again, we've seen corporate landlords increase rent by hundreds of dollars a month. In one case, a thousand dollars a month, not because their costs are going up that much or because they're finally fixing things, but because they're taking advantage of the pandemic and a tight housing market to exploit and profit off of tenants even more. Tenants typically have 30 days to find a way to pay or scramble to find somewhere else to go and there's not anywhere else. Tenants are having to live in their cars because of rent gouging. As a tenant leader in Hartford told me, how can you uproot and change your whole financial situation in a month? We are stuck in these buildings. Nine times out of 10, we have no money to leave. Our choice is living in the streets or finding the money to pay a rent increase. And we've had enough. Rent skyrocketed all over the state during the last two years, up an average of 20% and even higher in some towns and with some landlords. Wages haven't increased near as much and half of Connecticut renters were already rent burdened, struggling to pay rent. Tenants simply do not have the money to pay more. And rent increases mean going without healthcare, food and other necessities. Evictions are up and so is homelessness. And a big part of that is skyrocketing rent. In 2022, we had the highest number of evictions since at least 2017. And a $100 rent increase is associated with a 9% increase in homelessness. And we know that this rent gouging is most impacting black and brown working class renters who are being driven out of their homes and neighborhoods in our cities and our suburbs fueling gentrification and displacement. Landlords need to stop uprooting our lives. But right now, there's no limit on rent increases in Connecticut. A landlord can raise your rent 10%, 20%, 50%, even 75%. All rent increases we've seen in organizing with tenants. We're gonna be hearing from some wonderful speakers next. I'm gonna introduce all three of them in their speaking order right now. Uh, then we're going to hear from them in order. So first we're going to have Greta Blau, uh, tenant leader with Sarah Monte uh, in the Hamden Tenants Union and CT Tenants Union. Then we'll be hearing from Sharon Carroll, a tenant leader with the Maple Avalon Union in the Hartford's Tenants Union. And finally, we'll be hearing from Juan Fonseca Tapia, an organizer with the Center for Leadership and Justice, home of the Greater Hartford Interfaith Action Alliance. So Greta, if you'd like to take it away, go ahead. Hello, my name is Greta Blau. I live in Hamden. I'm extremely proud to be here as a representative of the Ten Hamden Tenants Union and to be part of this incredible coalition supporting this legislation. 
Over the past year, the Hamden Tenants Union has worked in solidarity with tenants across Connecticut to combat unjust rate rent raises, systemic mold, ineffective health departments, poor maintenance, and predatory towing. One tenant comes to mind. His name is Jamie, and he's my neighbor. He is an EMT who got hurt on the job during COVID. The landlord has towed his car numerous times, despite money pr promised from Unite CT, and then dragged Jamie and his wife to eviction court. Jamie and his wife recently went before the Fair Rent Commission in Hamden, and despite the abuse and unfair treatment of Jamie and his wife, Iris, the Fair Rent Commission met the landlord in the middle and ruled that a 10% rent raise was reasonable. But 10% is not reasonable for the working people of Connecticut. And this ruling also expires after one year. We need real sustainable change and real guidelines for municipalities to follow. When I started this work more than a year ago, I was skeptical or maybe a little afraid it wouldn't succeed. For those of you who are here tonight, who are in need, who need a union, who need support, who need solidarity, to those who are tired, organizing together works. We went from three people to hundreds of members encompassing several complexes We've revived the Fair Rent Commission in Hamden. We have a Fair Rent Commission that just passed the Human Services Committee in Hamden two nights ago. We have stood in solidarity with our neighbors and we have come together as a real community, a family who is here for one another. We are making real change with collective action. Many of us are tired, I get it. I'm tired too. <laughs> Many of us are tired of patchwork, band-aid fixes, fighting hard every day, getting uneven and temporary solutions. Last year, 411 poor and working class families were evicted in Hamden. We have momentum now. We have a vibrant movement now. And the Hamden Tenants Union is ready to fight to pass this crucial piece of legislation now. Housing security, and our society is unfortunately a privilege. If you do not have to consider where you will live each year, if you do not have to worry about ensuring your children will have continuity in community and education, then you are fortunate. Passing a 3% cap on rent raises or two and a half percent, ending mm -hmm. no cause eviction will ensure that many more Connecticut residents will have housing security for years to come. The Hamden Tenants Union is here, ready to fight, standing in solidarity with all Connecticut tenants. And we are here to say, safe, stable, and healthy housing is a human right. This is an important and historical time in our world where we, we have real opportunities for change. And the people of Connecticut are looking to carve out dignified lives for themselves, their families, and their communities. So please come join us as we fight and win this historic piece of legislation. We can do this, but only if we do it together. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll be hearing from Sharon Carroll, a leader of the tenants uh, organizing at Maple and Avalon in Hartford. Go ahead, Sharon. All right. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Sharon Terrell. I'm a member of the Hartford Tenants Union. I have resided at 27 Marshall Street in Hartford since July 2019. I'm here tonight to ask the people in power to please take our demands seriously. You need to hear the stories of our abusive property owners and not dismiss us. It is about time that all of you reinforce the penalties and laws against these dangerous and exploitative landlords. Do your job and keep our families safe under a roof, safe and living in the neighborhood that we help to build as a community. Our working families of Hartford are struggling to live paycheck to paycheck, to put food on the table and pay rent. Home should be the one source of continued strength, stability, comfort, and dignity. I know for sure that with my unionized neighbors, we are going to keep these bad actors accountable to get tenants, dignified housing, and good quality of life. We the tenants who had been held hostage by slumlords for years of negligence, 
living in atrocious conditions deserve decent living and a safe and clean environment. The games that slumlords play are meant to force rent increments, destabilize our communities and force us out of our apartments. Slumlords make our apartments conditions so bad that folks are compelled to leave. Then the slumlords make improvements to lure market rates, tenants using tenants, money who decide to stay because there is nowhere else to go. These actions are deplorable and we are going to do all we can to stop them. It's wicked, it's heartless, it's demoralizing and an abuse of tenants' human rights. We, the tenants, are working very hard to keep our homes. Many of us were essential workers during the pandemics, and we usually are exploited in our jobs. A rent cap is more than necessary. We deserve it. Because the rent increases deliberately, um, deliberately every year, and our incomes do not. Many of our neighbors have been evicted from their apartments, many of them single mothers and nobody is doing anything about it for us. All of you were elected to represent us. So I'm here demanding a rent cap ASAP to keep roofs over the heads of my neighbors and I. We have been demanding and applying to all the sources meant for tenants rights, but everything is obsolete and isn't working. My attendance, tonight is to demand real change for my neighbors and I, for me and for generations to come. We are dealing with a critical emergency of rent increases from 150 to 250 and 50, excuse me, monthly in some cases, which doesn't seem to have any control. If you do not have new leases signed, they will charge $200 or more until you sign the new lease. Plus the rent already in, is incremented. You have been an accomplice in allowing this to happen to the low income black and brown emigrant communities of Hartford. Enough is enough. We need to tax those slumlords so they stop prof profiting at the expense of the tenants. Reinforce penalties and laws against them and their abuses and apply rent control to stop the unjustified increases. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sharon. Uh, next, we're gonna be hearing from Juan. Uh, so Juan, if you wanna get started, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Juan Fonseca Tapia. I am a, an organizer at the Center for Leadership and Justice, um, home of Greater Harbor Interfaith Action Alliance. Um, on August 8th of 2021, I was admitted to Danbury Hospital for two emergency surgeries after injuring my right shoulder two weeks prior and not listening to my body. This injury caused three blood clots one was going up towards my head, one towards my heart, and one that was 14 inches long going down my arm. I never thought that my shoulder injury would end up in five surgeries, 11 visits to the emergency department, and hundreds of medical appointments with multiple specialists. Today, I am still recovering, dealing with chronic pain and PTSD, from the trauma that my body has suffered. And like my surgeon said, I am lucky to be alive. I know that my body will never be the same, but I also know that I am privileged because I had the access to the care I needed. Otherwise, I would have never been able to pay over $637,000 to receive the treatment that saved my life. Most people, especially my immigrant community, face a very different reality. And COVID has showed us that. In Connecticut, we have lost 11,863 people, most of them being black, brown, and immigrants. 
Yes, the virus killed them, but many were very ill. To leave the American dream, because most have to choose between having a roof over their heads or eating or taking insulin or blood pressure medications and receiving life-saving treatments. At the beginning of COVID, I work at an urgent care where I saw hundreds of uninsured undocumented immigrants who paid $150 to be seen and at times $20 for a Tylenol tab. The urgent care visits put them on the brink of being kicked out of their homes. Seeing the systemic violence and exploitation firsthand made me furious. I am still furious because I am tired of seeing my immigrant community being exploited by their bosses, their landlords, and our government. Rent control is a race issue, it's a class issue, and it's an immigrant's issue. Landlords know that no matter what they do to undocumented immigrant tenants, they will never say anything because of their immigration status. Rocio, Pedro, Maria, Julia, Marta, and Jose each got a $300 rent increase, even though they live in apartments with mold, pests, and unsafe electric systems. After she told him she couldn't pay the $300 increase, Marta's landlord threatened her saying, if you continue to complain and don't pay me, I will call immigration on you. Jose and Pedro share similar stories. I told them that we could do something and they said, no. I didn't ask why, because I recognized the look of pain and fear on their faces. The pain of living in survival modes and the fear of being forced to live in the shadows like my brother and his wife. I am tired of meeting people like Marta and Pedro who have been living in fight or flight mode because of housing instability. I am tired of witnessing the dehumanization of my people I am tired of laws designed to serve a few and exploit the poor. I am tired of hearing politicians tell us that this is not the right time. I am tired of cosmetic changes that don't get to the roots of these issues. I am tired of systems that prioritize capital over people. This needs to stop. We are the resistance. We were placed here by our ancestors to break the systemic chains we are, to push the line and fight back, to revolt against the oppression of our people. Gia's anti-racism commitment calls us to fight white supremacy and dismantle systems of oppression. Gia's 49 churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples know that our moral duty is to end the exploitation and protect tenants, which is why we stand in support of a stateway rent cap. We know that Connecticut could be better, and we call upon all houses of worship, lawmakers, and our governor to work with us to cap the rent in the state and to end the housing crisis we are facing. Let us work together to arrive at a society that ensures everyone can live healthy, abundant, and dignified lives with, no, with the peace of mind of knowing that housing will not be used to exploit, exploit us regardless of our class, our race, and our immigration status. The time to fight, it's now. Thank you so much, Juan. Uh, I definitely want to reiterate that the time to fight is now. Um, if I can introduce Hannah. Uh, Hannah is an organizer with Unite Here Local 33, who we got to congratulate for their uh, stunning win at Yale this past week. Uh, 
as well as a co-chair of the New Haven branch of Democratic Socialists of America, Joanne Hanna. Hi, everybody, and thanks, Juan, for your, your words and for everyone who came before. Um, so like Jason said, my role right now is to tell you our plan to win. So every single one of us has a role in the fight for 2.5% cap on rent raises and an end to no cause evictions. So we're gonna win this piece of historic legislation by harnessing the power of the people. Even though the influential real estate lobby has money, millions of dollars is no match for the power of the people acting collectively to fight for a Connecticut where everyone can put down deep roots in their community. So together, whether homeowner or renter across race, class and zip code, we're gonna show our elected officials that rent stabilization now is the will of the people of Connecticut. And we're not running this fight like a typical campaign. On the road to winning rent caps, we're gonna build out our tenant movement stronger, bigger and more powerful than ever. We're gonna bring in more people and more resources into our spaces. And we're gonna train everyone we can on the organizing basics. As Luke, a leader in the movement, reminded me, learning how to fight for ourselves and each other is the number one goal of this campaign. Our real power lies in our relationships we have built um, and the relationships that we will build. So with the power that we'll establish in this campaign, we'll have the ability to shape a Connecticut in which we truly have housing liberation for all. Okay, so what's the plan? Grassroots organizing is at the heart of our plan to win this legislation. We're gonna win through one, our power in numbers, and two, the power of our stories. So using the infrastructure and leadership we built through organizing tenant unions statewide, we're gonna run weekly canvases and weekly phone banks in cities across Connecticut. And the arc of our grassroots campaign is gonna follow the arc of the legislative calendar this spring. So the legislator convened last week and the housing committee public hearings are gonna be in late February or March, and voting on the legislation is gonna happen in May or June. So our grassroots campaign is going to be pushing this bill every step of the way from now until there's the vote, um, reminding and pushing our elected representatives who work for us, for the people and not for profit, that their constituents demand a cap on rent raises now. So how exactly are these canvases going to help us keep the pressure on our electeds throughout the legislative session? So while we're canvassing, we're going to one, get commitments on our statewide petition. Two, we're gonna turn people out to our weekly phone banks to contact their elected representatives. And three, we're gonna give every single person an on-ramp to get more deeply involved in the behind the scenes of this campaign to fight for themselves and for their neighbors. Most importantly, we'll be creating and taking opportunities to share public testimony that will push lawmakers to take tenant power and tenant stories seriously. So before, during, and after the public hearings in March, March is sort of the, the midpoint of this campaign, uh, we're going to bring people we've identified on the doors while canvassing to rally for rent control, to give public testimonies to their elected representatives, and to come out and canvass. Um, and we know that sharing a personal narrative is one of the most powerful and effective tools we have in community organizing, as has been demonstrated tonight. It's our stories that often motivate us to act. And we have proof that tenants acting collectively to share their stories has a real impact. In December, the New Haven Tenant Movement called a meeting with State Senator Gary Winfield to talk about our need for a 2.5 cap on rent raises and an end to no cause eviction. We actually said 3%. Winfield was the one who bumped it to 2.5%. Um, a large group of tenants from Blake Street Tenants Union and Ocean's Tenant Union gave testimony about their struggles about managing high rents and increasing rents on stagnant wages, fixed incomes, and the cost of childcare. In a follow-up meeting set by Senator Winfield, he told us he wanted to partner with us in this fight. So Senator Winfield uh, is a key champion of this bill. Winfield himself introduced this legislation in the Senate last week. So the power of people acting and testifying collectively will get us this win. So I want to ask all of you tonight who have joined us 
Um, there are so many people here on this call, and that is really so exciting. I want to ask you, what's the role you want to take in this fight for a 2.5% cap on rent raises and an end to no-cause eviction? Every action that you take moves all of us one step closer to a win this spring. As Marilla, a leader in the movement, also reminded me in a conversation earlier this week, the core of this campaign is community, right? We're fighting for people to be able to choose where they live, how long they can stay where they live, and how deeply they can put down roots. So we're fighting for ourselves and we're fighting for each other. Um, and I'm just gonna remind you all of the steps you can take and then I'll explain the breakout groups. Um, so some of the steps are getting involved, coming to Canvas, coming to Phone Bank, signing the petition. Another type of way you can get involved is sharing your story. Come to a meeting with an elected representative, tell your story in an email, a letter, or a postcard to your representative. And always bring a friend to any and all of these actions. So as you're thinking about the steps you'll take and the role you can play in the movement, uh, we're going to be heading into breakout groups to discuss these ideas together. So I'm going to take a moment right now um, before we finalize the breakout groups that um, you put EN if you are would like to be in an English speaking breakout group in front of your name and you put ES if you would like to be in a Spanish speaking group. Um, and how you do that is, I know this is like a... Um, zoom technological feat but you go to the three dots on the right hand corner you click it and then if you go all the way down it says um rename and then if you rename you can put you can put that in the um in your name so i'm just going to take a second to to do that you can see some people put in the chat so here are some of the questions that we have for you guys um one is why does this matter to you and who in your community does this matter to? The other is what can you do to win rent caps? And the third, personally, one that I find really generative is how would your world and the world of your loved ones change if we won rent caps and an end uh, to no cause eviction? And if you're media, please stay in this, the main area and don't join the breakouts. Uh, so we're going to be... Give me one second for everybody to rejoin. I gotta open up my participants tab to make sure we have our similar number of people. Yes, okay. Uh, so welcome back everyone. Uh, so to close this out for tonight, uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, if, if anybody wants to share in the chat rather, uh, how their breakout room went, if any amazing insights were revealed, uh, please feel free to dump those in the chat and I might read from them if I have a, uh, a second. Uh, but to close us out for tonight, uh, we're going to be uh, reminding people to sign the petition that we need to uh, be sending to our legislators across Connecticut uh, to force them to uh, give us a rent cap. Um, I'm going to drop that link in the chat again. Remember to share it with your friends, neighbors, anyone you know who is uh, willing to sign this petition and support this cause. Um, I'm going to be passing it to Teresa uh, to close it out for us. Uh, Teresa, are you ready? I am ready. Thank Go you, on. everybody, for being here. Muchísimas gracias a todos por estar acá. Um, well, first, uh, I want to say that there's many ways that you can involve in our campaign. And uh, one is ask the housing co-chairs and leadership to support rent caps. And um, we have a script, our voices matters, and making sure the bill has hearing and get passed. And you can use the links that we are showing in our slide. And come to our first campaign onboarding on January 19th at 6.30 p.m., followed by the phone bank at 7 p.m. And uh, then we can... Um, Come to our first canvas in New Haven on Saturday at 1 p.m. Uh, through Bridge Square Park. Then you have a way where to sign here in our uh, slide two to RSVP. Talk to your neighbors. That is very, very important because we are a community. Remember, this is a community issue and that is how we're gonna fight. 
Um, we will hold canvases around the state to get people involved in the campaign. We hold weekly phone banks and have a toolkit so you can host canvases yourself. Talk with your neighbors. Meet with your legislator, preferably with your neighbors. Um, we support you uh, with this. Ask others to publicly support the campaign and testify in support of our rent cap. We will hold storytelling workshops and do this together, my friends, because this is a community that will win everything if we are together. We build power for our tenants movement. Tell us your commitment on the petition that uh, Jason already, um, already shared. And ask onboarding team to introduce themselves quickly. We will send out an email uh, to everyone with the materials, the script to call legislator now and the sign up to Canvas in this Saturday and the campaign onboarding and the phone bank in January 19. Uh, will you gonna, somebody's going to share on the chat. So uh, now I'm gonna, I think we're gonna close it up. I am uh, very honored to be with all of you here. I am um, really here every story uh, we have in the breakout room too with our community members. And I will talk a little bit now. My name is Teresa Quintana and I am the housing organizer with Make the Road Connecticut. I moved to this country over 20 years ago and as an uh, undocumented immigrant without many resources, I was forced to live with rats, um, roaches and mold in my apartment. It is heartbreaking for me to see that after so long, nothing has changed for our neighbors. We believe that the abuse of outdated law by a slumlord to exploit the tenants of Connecticut need to change now. And that the 3% rent cap is necessary, not only to keep them accountable, my friends, but also to keep many of us safe. Affordable housing isn't a choice for our community anymore. And tenants from all around Connecticut have decided that enough is enough. We hear from Sharon about a very hardworking woman and a single mother, mother like Jara who toilet unstoppably to keep a roof over her kids' head. We hear from our undocumented community members and their fight to not be homeless or displayed from their, their places they call home, as I did too. History reminds us that displacement has been happening for decades. Now, because it is the way the system divide us, our communities, keep them oppressed and isolated. Today, we are more united than ever before, knocking down barriers like a lack of language justice to connect through our struggles and discover that fixing individual issues won't stop unaffordability. Unity is the key in our fight for the 3% rent cap. We are part of the system and we are going to change what is working, what isn't working for us. Affordability is essential for our community to thrive and live with dignity as well as, well as pursue our happiness. If you believe in housing justice, fight with us for the 3% rent cap in Connecticut because housing it's a human right, not a right to profit. And thank you very much for being here. I really, really thanks all the stories that we hear today. Um, I really love to work with all of you every day and uh, for our community because we love each other and we care about our community as well. Thank you so much, Teresa. Uh, and I wanna reiterate that I think we are all here because uh, at least in my breakout, I think so many people voice that they are people who are struggling themselves with housing or have struggled with housing. Um, uh, this is really an issue, I think, that unites us all um, as a class of people who have uh, been forced to rent for our entire lives. Uh, the economy is not built for working people. It is not built for immigrants. It is not built for disabled people. Uh, it only benefits those at the top, uh, people who are extracting our labor, extracting extracting our rent. Um, and we are building this movement of 
200 plus people tonight uh, who are willing to fight for housing liberation. Uh, and I really want to thank everybody for being here tonight. And everybody who has interpreted tonight and helped with this interpretation and made it happen, again, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate everything. Again, really want to stress, uh, please uh, get in touch with us via the petition uh, and all the links you see uh, on the screen and being posted in the chat right now. Uh, we want to work with you all uh, and really uh, build this movement for housing liberation with you all. Um, thank you once again for being with us through this uh, experience of an event. Uh, and Sarah or Hannah, if anybody else has any closing thoughts, please feel free to close us out. Um, my closing thought is please come to the 19th for our first on bank onboarding and phone bank combination. You want to figure out what your role is. We'll tell you what's available. We'll let you know. We'll give you a broader outline. We'll get to know each other and then we'll call some elected representatives. Um, so my final words are words of action because that is what we're going to do. And how many people are on this call, call tonight just makes me feel like we can actually win this. Um, and I'm really excited. <laughs> Thank you for that live on the screen addition to the uh, <laughs> to the slide. Um, uh, yeah, thank you so much again to the Greater Hartford Interfaith Action Alliance, uh, as well as all of our local tenant unions, uh, all the labor unions that supported tonight, and all the other community groups and housing justice organizations that supported us. Uh, we're obviously going to be in touch with everybody in follow-up emails about how you can get involved, uh, and we will hopefully be hearing from you soon.